So, what is atychophobia? It is the abnormal, unwarranted, and persistent fear of failure. Fear of failure, a normal amount of doubt regarding success of certain projects, relationships, or examinations, is usually present in most people, and it's not uncommon and it's not abnormal. However, when the fear of failure takes on an extreme form, it is termed as atychophobia. It's like analysis paralysis. You analyze too much and you paralyze. Sometimes we go through that and uh, we, uh, I'll give you some examples and some sayings from statesmen and also how to overcome this kind of phobia. Failure is nothing but success in progress. So failure is part of success. I can give a personal example. And uh, when I was in my high school or middle school, uh, after my 12th grade, uh, I took this exam called MSET. Is there. That's where you uh, go into medical school or engineering. And uh, I got admission to both, into a top engineering college and a med school. And I had to decide because my dad said, you had to become a doctor. So I became a doctor. However, um, my heart was always there in engineering and I wanted to be a computer engineer with a management background. Well, I went to medical school. It was not my cup of tea. My heart was not there. Somehow I passed the exams, but there was one exam I failed. And I was like, part of the reason is I took it very lightly. And uh, that exam, uh, it was called, that subject was called sleep producing medicine, also called social and preventive medicine. And I thought, I don't need this in my life. So I didn't care that much. But now, with all this uh, pandemic of uh, COVID going on, I'm glad I read it twice. So some things come handy, and there's always a purpose to that. Thomas Alva Edison failed experiment 1,000 times, and the bulb went on the 1,000th first time. He said, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. There are two ways of doing things. Pick the difficult way. Not only you'll reach the goal anyway, but you'll gain experience on the side. Most people give up right before they reach the end of the tunnel. They try, 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 and they don't see the light, and they just give up. Little do they know that the light is right across the corner. If you look up at a list of 100 people from the last century, most of the people who are successful went outside the box and recovered from the failure with vengeance. However, most people who follow the rules and never fail are scared to get, take the risk are successful with mediocrity and are often never remembered. Life is like a canvas, especially for you med students. It's young, it's, it's like a total white canvas. You make mistakes. You better make mistakes when you are young because when you are old, you don't want to make mistakes. So it's better to make mistakes than now when you are in training than when you become a consultant and attend, or an attending. Draw, build, play, dance, and live only as you can. And try to be creative. Take risk, make mistakes, make fun. Uh, in the, and after my medical school, uh, I went to Delhi to write uh, the All India exam, the AIMS entrance for postgraduates. And uh, while coming back, I didn't prepare well. So I got into this. It was very hot. And I got into this AC compartment. The general compartment was totally full. And the TT came and said, well, you don't have a ticket. Well, I didn't have a ticket. So I said, well, you have to get down. He said, well, it's so hot outside. Can I at least stay here? He said, well, but you don't have a seat here. I said, that's fine. Um, and uh, how, I asked him, how much time is there? I, he said, there may be another 30 minutes. So what I did is I took a, got down the train. There is, used to be a street called Panchukin Road. I don't know if it's still there. I went there and it has tons of shops with chairs. So I went, bought a couple of reclining chairs, and came and sat in the AC compartment and the TT was smiling at me and he didn't bother me. So be creative, do fun things. 
my great concern is not whether you have failed but whether you are content with your failure that's from abraham lincoln so never accept a failure don't be content with failure you fail that's fine that's part of success keep on moving it's fine to celebrate success but it is more important to heed the lessons of failure the reason i took this topic is especially for the medical students you in america you go to medical school after college that means you are at least 22 23 you finish college you are more matured but in india you go to medical school at 16 17 when you are still a teenager you just finish high school you don't even know life and uh, you don't know what you want to become you only go to med school because you got good grades in your high school or 12th grade and your parents want you to join there so if you all the students who went to med school or top of the class in high school once you come there you are still you are not the top of the class so you are somewhere in the middle or last or first quarter or second quarter or third quarter but keep on trying because you are going to rule the world someday account to bill gates bill gates is one success story of the century but he is the most grounded and most humble person success is a lousy teacher it seduces smart people into thinking they can't lose so if you want to fail better fail in the early phases than late phases because you go to a, a casino even if you lose earlier if you win later it all covers up but you don't want to end the success with failure so take the failure first failure is always there with success sometimes by losing a battle you'll find a new way to win the war this is by donald trump you know donald trump is another success story of the century entrepreneur very successful real estate tycoon and he's also the president of united states so he would rather lose a battle but he would like to win the war henry ford he's another success story he started his business making tires in south america which he miserably failed became bankrupt several times then he said okay i'll go into the car business from tires and he's another huge success story of the century he made every american on the four wheeler joe biden is a presidential candidate now running for the president of united states failure at some point in your life is inevitable but giving up is unforgivable lebron james lebron james is another top star basketball player who came from the rags and he knows failures more than anybody else he says you have to be able to accept failure to get better if you go to interviews uh, this is little bit uh, i don't know what the situation now in india but the united states uh, sports is always considered a part of the curriculum um and whenever you go for interviews first thing they ask is do you play group sports or team sports because that's where sports teaches you how to fail when you fail how to get up when you fall down and keep on moving so it's very important to play team sports and also it imp- improves your team spirit malcolm forbes is another successful entrepreneur and he started the magazine called forbes magazine which is considered a top level magazine in the world failure is success if you learn from it so failure is good but you have to learn from it just don't stay there or don't stop there and keep on making the same mistake you make a mistake but you learn from it michael jordan another top star all time uh, hi my uh, basketball player michael jordan i can accept failure everyone fails at something but i can't accept not trying so keep on trying even you fall down pick up the pieces and get up and move on more her usheba he is a martial art founder of a kido failure is the key to success each mistake teaches us something Ralph Emerson is an American essayist, lecturer, philosopher and poet. He says, always find a new path. 
and leave a trail for others don't follow others paths so do not go where the path may lead go instead where there is no path and leave a trail for others richard branson he is the all time hero of several people and mine too and he is a billionaire owner of virgin group of industries he he takes risks all the time from bungee jumping to all kind of dangerous sports he said do not be embarrassed by your failures learn from them and start again here i have to tell you an example when i first came to united states long time back more than uh, 30, around 30 years ago everything was new now Amer the difference be social difference between america and united states is not that much uh, but when i came there was significant difference we did watch english movies we did watch sports english sports uh, cricket international cricket and all that stuff but still there was significant uh, culture difference so when i came uh, when i was doing my training i also did my mba um, and um, because i said in the past that i was passionate about computer engineering and management so that how and i ended up uh, joining md radiology in usmania then i moved to united states joined radiology but that management thing was always in my mind so i also joined mba so when i taking my mba class that was when i first came to united states um there was a uh, the professor wanted us to discuss about uh, the talk the lecture was about interpersonal relations and office uh, relations so the professor said okay let's have a speech everybody give a 5 minute speech on this topic called bo well i was very new i didn't know what is bo i couldn't ask because i felt embarrassed so i was just listening there were 20 people in the class luckily it went by my last name so my last name came around like 15th or so so i was listening and i listened to 10 15 people i still i couldn't get it what it is so well i my time time came i didn't know what it is so but i had to go speak so what i did i borrowed some phrases from everybody and i just finished my speech and i survived then i went home and i asked my wife my wife uh, is uh, was the us its citizen and she was born and brought up here i said what is bo it's like oh that's body order so you make mistakes but you ask robert schuller failure doesn't mean you are a failure it just means you haven't succeeded yet so you are on the path you will reach there but don't give up shahrukh khan who doesn't know shahrukh khan in the world the most widely known person in the world he says success and failure are both part of life both are not permanent shahrukh khan if you know like his father audited did audition for a small role in shole he didn't get it and from that day he thought that i should get into this and he went through so many failures early in the life but he succeeded and he reached pinnacle he says shahrukh khan says success is not a good teacher failure makes you humble and grounded so make mistakes but learn from mistakes and you'll hit success steve jobs another high time success story of the entire century and unfortunately he lost his life due to bad health at the age of 51 he said i can give any amount of money to give me few more years to live but he couldn't he said sometime life hits you in the head and with a brick but don't lose faith thomas watson is a nobel prize winner for the dna if you want to increase the success rate double your failure rate so keep on failing but you'll hit success if you ever watch casinos in las vegas at the slot machines you see these old seniors what they do is they watch you they watch you because they want you to lose 10 20 times and when you get tired and you leave they come and hit the jackpot because they know after some failures success is going to come winston churchill churchill was a prime minister of united, uh, united kingdom and is one of the most successful prime ministers and he took united kingdom to victory in the world war 2 
success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm so keep that enthusiasm zig ziglar is an american author salesman and motivational speaker failure is a detour detour not a dead end street here i had to tell another example uh, i was uh, after my residency i was applying for my fellowships in interventional neuro radiology and uh, i got admit uh, interview from johns hopkins uh, because uh, it was very busy during my residency on call and stuff so i i postponed once for the interview and they were fine then after a while there was an emergency in my residency and i couldn't go again and i said i postponed again they agreed okay then they gave me an, uh, another date on the third third time so i was in the uh, i uh, was going to washington dc and on my way uh, driving of course i stopped in uh, new jersey jersey city uh, in my brother in law's place and the next morning i was supposed to drive to washington dc this from boston so what happened then uh, i woke up i don't see my car i was surprised oh my god what happened to my car well my car got stolen in jersey city well i called them and i said sorry and uh, i can't uh, come today i need to reschedule again well uh, they thought i was telling some stories i told them that my car got stolen they didn't believe me and uh, when i called the next time to reschedule they said sorry we gave it to somebody else i was disappointed i can't believe i missed this golden opportunity then i tried again at couple of other places then i ended up in harvard at beth israel deganis and uh, brigham hospitals and i went there and i ended up staying there on harvard faculty for uh, 13 years and as chief of interventional neuroradiology later of my later part of my service there so if one door closes thousand other doors open so don't give up i hope this year you make mistakes make mistakes make mistakes nobody has ever done before do not freeze do not stop do not worry keep on moving make mistakes but learn from them and success is next door there are some of the blockbusters how in uh, um change your attitude from negative attitude change to attitude adjustment list the possible outcomes and aspects of the problem if there is some risk involved always take the risk take some risk and you have to make your points and if failure happens you should be able to handle that failure breaking the rules as i said during my train in the in delhi i broke the rules i sat in the ac compartment but i brought my own chair and uh, the tt was smiling he was making fun of me but he didn't kick me out so don't go over reliance on logic don't think too much logic this is a time to make mistakes and make mistakes but don't give up don't give up if you fail take it in your stride and keep on moving forward and don't think about oh, what will happen that way this way just write down what if questions write your answers dream high always dream high you hit for the stars you may hit the moon here are some of the examples who failed oprah winfrey failed as a news reporter and she be- has become a phenomenon she is the most successful news reporter ever a billionaire again vincent churchill failed the entrance exam for the royal military college at sanders three times before passing and being allowed to right brothers was expelled from school henry ford again the car companies tycoon went bankrupt five times vincent van gogh one of the best painters ever has sold only one painting in his lifetime he was ridiculed he was made fun of him about his paintings 
but look at his paintings now michael jordan failed to make his high school varsity team in his sophomore year jk rowling you know she is the author of harry potter she is hit rock bottom and was virtually penniless divorced single mother living in the parks and jobless 7 years after graduation now you know how kind of phenomena she is what kind of phenomena it is impossible to live without failure at something unless you live so cautiously that is impossible to fail in which case you fail by default so if you always plan not to fail that means you already fail by default embrace failure failure is your friend fear of failure is the greatest inhibitor to risk taking if major breakthroughs are to be made risk will have it to be taken failures resulting from this risk will occur but are only events on the learning curve on the left is ideal learning curve everybody wants to have this they want to just become like a huge leap and become successful but that is not real life you hit some success then fail hit some success then fail it's like a step ladder pattern and eventually you will end up in success if you stopped at 5 thinking this is it well you would have been way away from your success i'll have to tell you another example here so i did uh, my residency in india in radiology then i came to united states you know when i was there in india we did not have cat scans in our hospital mris or not even procedures uh, we did not do that many we did some and we had to go to outside hospitals to learn so when i came here i came as a fellow did the fellowship first and on the day one they said okay go do a cerebral angiogram oh my god that night i couldn't sleep i had to read 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 practice on my own where the pulses are the groin pulses and went there and i it was very stressful and the fourth year residents were better than me when i first came so i took their help i never gave up and i didn't i didn't realize that i'll be 10 years later i'll be chief of intervention neuroradiology at one of the harvard programs so keep working in several universities they have started this programs called failure 101 especially in the management degrees and in the engineering degrees because they want you to fail because failure is bound to happen and you have to learn to get up from failure that is the most important thing once you got that covered you will succeed three am post it notes they were trying to make a ultra hard glue somehow it failed and it failed miserably and uh, but it's a greatest failure success that means it failed as a investigational glue but became successful because it did not stick well because people are used to post its where it does you don't want it to stick well so it's there are several examples where there are greatest failure successes does anybody know this this is the vasa museum in stockholm sweden this is another most successful failure this ship this huge ship it was installed on 10th august 1628 the shortest maiden voyage in history what happened was as soon as it was installed within minutes the ship f- collapsed and was at the seabed 32 meters below several hundred years later it was pulled up and made into a museum and that museum makes millions of dollars now from the money from the visitors so it's one of the most successful failure overcoming the fear of failure take a pen and paper and write it down what the risk is why the risk is important the worst possible outcome what are your options given the worst possible outcome what you could learn to start again given the worst possible outcome what could you learn so basically two take home points take risk don't be always conservative there is rest of life ahead of you to be conservative that is good for later half of your life now it's time to take risk take risk and failure failure is part of your life it happens on a daily basis the most important thing is not failing the most important thing is 
pick up your pieces from where you fell mold them together glue them together stand up and keep fighting i have a small video at the end some of my um, risk taking behavior it's a short video 3 minute video
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that short presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for your insights and valuable time. I think we Thank can you. now proceed to the Q and A session. Sure. Good. It Anyone was have it? really motivating and really inspirational. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, let me see. What? I'll see if I can read some questions. Uh, oh, there's a lot of echo. Okay, the one of the question is, what do I need to do if uh, if I desire to pursue medicine and research in US after MBBS? Please guide and wish to pursue a path. Um, so all the people I know, whoever want to United States, they came somehow. So first you have to dream. You have to dream, make it real, and it will happen. Everybody, whoever wanted to come, all the people I know, they are here and whoever want to do a residencies, that's a good thing of, of uh, America. It gives you second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance, sixth chance. So it gives, keeps on giving you chances. That's a, a difficulty in India a little bit because you only get limited choices, limited chances. But here, if you want something, you try to get a research and you will get somewhere and you'll always find uh, something that fits you. So keep on pursuing. And uh, if you want to do research, pick a research. For, you can, now it's so easy to find on internet who, what is the research you're interested in. And try to do something in passion. With, uh, with uh, medicine, you do what you like, then automatically all the success comes on you. Upload in the YouTube and you it's clear the present you will think you will even when an operation is leaving this one says in medical college. Okay. Clear that you are from Mars and do you really think we can widen our horizon living in circumstances in medical college? I mean that medical school is more grueling in a sense. Uh, I agree. Medical school is more grueling uh, grueling in uh, India. It's uh, that's the difference between here and uh, um, there. Here you hardly see medical students studying. When I was in med school. We, we like we we studied like six months or three months or two months before the exam, depending on the exam, and uh, very rarely we took charge there. Here, the students first of all, you go to medical school when you are 22, 23. That means uh, you know you have passion for medical school, at least some passion, because if you not have passion, you don't go to medical school here. And second thing is they give you patience. So as a student, you are in charge of patients. So that means you already act as a real doctor so you take care of them you uh, go you see that patient from starting to the end point whereas in india that you go for lectures it's that connection with the patients for the medical students is less because we spend more time studying part of the reason is that teaching is also very limited there here there's a lot of teaching involved and people who go to academics are paid very well here as compared to in India. That's part of the reason uh, we have top uh, physicians in academics and who are interested in teaching. After medical school, going to IAS exam good. After it medical school, going to IAS exam is good or bad? Well, at one point, I was also passionate of becoming an IPS when I was young, and I tried to do that. But uh, it's a totally different uh, thing. If you are really interested in IAS, I would advise you to go to engineering or a degree with a shorter degrees. Medical school is a longer commitment.